uh, and and okay. Um, hi again. Uh, apologies. Hopefully, um, Faith will work her magic and edit out all of my um, weird looks and and eye rolls and. Um, shaking of my head a little earlier because this is my first time doing this. So there was a lot of um, technical stuff in the beginning, but now here we are. Uh, apologies again, and let's get started. So um, I'm thrilled to be here. When we were, uh, just a little background, we were in a Zoom faculty meeting. So many of you may be, have been or may be um, adjusting to a, a new kind of Zoom or whatever platform you're using way of life uh, these days. Um, but one thing that was said in this faculty meeting a couple of, well, a few weeks ago now um, that Pat Dunn was running and it was my, with the fellow, um, my colleagues at the Writing Institute was this notion and this idea of offering some writing uh, opportunities, some um, opportunities to talk about writing to the community. And I was really interested uh, immediately. So, um, as I said earlier, when I was trying to figure out if I was being recorded or not, one of the things I love is to um, diversify the group of people that I am um, working with and learning from and hopefully offering some instruction to. Uh, so I teach at the Writing Institute. I teach writing there, mostly nonfiction and memoir writing. I teach at uh, Montclair State University where I teach, right now I'm teaching creative nonfiction, but I've taught, um, I have taught, uh, English first year writing and, as I said, creative nonfiction there. Um, and then I also do work in middle with middle schoolers, sometimes with younger kids, sometimes with high schoolers, and sometimes I even go into um, uh, senior centers and community centers and do writing workshops there. I'm really, um, I'm sort of a firm believer and passionate about the idea of listening to people tell their stories, um, helping people tap into uh, things that they um, have a hunch um, really matters in their lives and especially in their memories and then figuring out ways to um, kind of bring that to life on the page. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, so and this idea of writing from the senses uh, actually has been something <coughs> that's come up um, a lot for me. Uh, I, I I wanted to kind of begin by by uh, telling a little story myself, and that is that um, I was a I was a student at the Writing Institute back in I think I started in around around 2005, and um, around that time it was either the first or second class I took there. Um, I was in a writing workshop very similar to the ones that I uh, that I facilitate now, and the instructor. Um, asked us to go to the page and he gave us a writing prompt again similar to what I do now in my classes and he said write your earliest memory and one of the first things that came to my mind and there are a lot of memories I mean we all have early memories of things that and a lot of times I find that my memories and people's memories are oftentimes um, can be you know like sort of glimpses and kind of there's a ha hazardness sometimes to when you're just initially bringing things back up, especially if you're wanting to um, revisit things that you want to write about or um, determine if they're ones that you'd like to bring to a page. Uh, so the first thing that came up for me was actually a song. And it was a, a song by um, BJ Thomas. And he, the song that actually, I think he, well, you probably hear it on the radio still, um, but it was also in a couple of movies. And, you know, it was in a movie that I just saw recently and I can't even remember what movie that was. It may come to me by the end of the um, time together. But so the song is called Raindrops Keep Falling on My uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. And I was that was the first thing that I thought of. It was the first thing that came to mind. So that's actually what I started writing. Um, I started uh, I started writing from that place. I, I remembered being um, being in a in in a place and I'll talk about that in a minute. And um, I was listening to the music and I was dancing to the music and that was my first memory. So I wrote it and I wrote it very quickly and it was, we were being timed. And um, from there, um, something sort of took hold and I, uh, 
continue to write from those kinds of sensory, um, those sensory places or those sensory, uh, um, those feelings basically, and those memories. So um, I, I do believe that, that this can be a really rich landscape to begin um, from as a writer, as an artist. And I wanted to talk a little bit today uh, and hopefully for the next few weeks about how I can maybe um, help people tap into that for themselves. So what I, um, what I wanted to do was to, and I'm hoping that I'm able to do this because I do want to, uh, um, I do want to have a chat uh, option so people can, um, so people will be able to offer uh, feedback. I'm just checking in with one thing. Um, so I am, oops. Okay, so one of the things that um, I thought I would do uh, is talk briefly about where some, also where some of the, the, um, the inspiration for this comes from, came from for me. Um, I, I, I think that um, when you think about senses, you think, we think a lot about uh, obviously the five senses, what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell, and what we touch. Um, so at the time when my instructor at the Writing Institute uh, said, you know, this was many years ago, right from your earliest memory, that's what came up for me, that memory of the sound of the music, that song. And then from there, it just kind of, it took off. Um, I think that if we help ourselves along and if we sort of, uh, if we allow ourselves to go to that place and think about the textures, the um, the the taste, the smells, the um, the things that we heard, the things that we remember touching that ha you know that had a particular sort of resonance for us, uh, I think that can be a really powerful place to start um, on the you know on the page uh, and and just even in our in our creative process. So I, I guess I, I, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a little um, show and tell. Uh, that, might be, um, that might be a good place to start. Uh, well, actually, no, let me go back and tell you a little bit about some of the writers and some of the, um, some of the, uh, uh, the people who have inspired me through their writing. So, and this is also a really great way too to help um, either, either people who may be either stuck in their work, in their creative process, or um, or people who are uh, just feeling like they need to kind of get started, um, new writers, people who've been writing for a long time and are finding that they're hitting a bit of a wall. Um, this book, this book is a memoir, uh, and it's by Joe Brainard. And this is a way that I really, I do really work to help students get unstuck, um, and also. Um, help students uh, um, figure out things that matter to them on the page. So um, the interesting thing about this memoir is that it was, it, the copyright on this, so it was written in the uh, mid seventies, it was written in 1975. And the entire, um, the entire memoir is written in the form of, I remember. So what does that mean? It means that every single sentence um, begins with the words, I remember. And the reason that I bring it up is because a lot of these, and first of all, so that just in itself is, is a very bold kind of, you know, risky thing to do to, you know, step out of a, of a, um, of sort of a, a shape and to do something that's, um, you know, really off the, off the radar, off the grid. I mean, it's not, you know, it isn't a usual thing to read a book where every single sentence starts with the same two words. So he, he definitely um, stepped out of, I'm not gonna say his comfort zone, but I certainly think for the average reader, they weren't used to this. Um, and I, I mean, I use this book all the time in my classes. I think it's a great book um, to help students just begin to you know, write freely about memories and about things that stuck um, and that are, um, you know, have a place inside of them. And in many, the whole point that I'm trying to make tonight is just to say that in many cases, those things are sensory based. 
So for example, on page 80, um, Joe Brainard, and these are just a handful, I'm just gonna give you a handful of them. Um, I remember roly poly bugs that curl up into a ball when you touch them. So there, we have the sense of touch. Um, I remember those yellow bushes that are the first things to flower in the spring. Um, and I'm sure actually that's pretty timely because most people are probably seeing those bushes which are called for Cynthia. Uh, and um, so that's another, um, you know, obviously the sense there he's seeing, you know, he's seeing the color and it's resonating and it's kind of, he's recording that or he did record it because years later he went back to, you know, speak to that. Um, I remember okra, hominy grits, liver and spinach. So there we have the sense of taste. Uh, I'm just gonna do one more. I remember an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So that is uh, this, you know, this, this memory of hearing this mantra, this sort of saying over and over, and it kind of stuck with him. So that's an example of a book that um, speaks to this idea of using senses to get memories flowing and to get, um, you know, to get words on, onto the page. Um, and what's really important is, and I say this all the time to students is, you know, this is not a time to, especially when you're first going to the page, even if, you know, if you choose to use that I remember model, this is, this is not a time to judge or to, you know, edit as you're going. It's really just a time to allow um, the, you know, the sensory recollections, if you will, to, to flow and to, um, and to, uh, give them a chance to sort of come alive and, and, and also give them a chance to, um, to allow a story to form, if that's what's going to happen. And trust me, there are many times where um, you go to the page and you do everything that you think you're supposed to be doing, if it's the I remember model, or if it's another model, or if it's simply just journaling, or just writing from a place of memory and, and even using all the senses. And you know, the story doesn't necessarily get shaped in that moment. And that happens a lot. And I'm sure there are many writers who are, um, who are thinking about that or listening right now and thinking, yeah, it doesn't just happen. And I get that. Um, sometimes it takes a, a, a while, but that is, that is a, a mechanism. That is an approach that you, you might be able to take. Uh, so again, that's the Joe Brainard, I remember book. Um, there are certainly a lot of other writers who write using a, um, you know, a, a uh, what I would say um, a really uh, sort of rich, um, rich uh, approach on the page in terms of um, of senses and, and really tapping into their senses. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I want to switch gears. I want to um, I want to just ask you, obviously, to think about the idea of writing from from a a sense of you know, writing from the sensory experiences that you've had. And by the way, when I say that you've had, I am speaking in the in the past tense, but it could have been 20 years ago, it could have been yesterday, it could have been this morning. It doesn't, there's not a um there there's certainly not um a time, you know, there's there's not a restriction with regard to time. And the other thing too is if you really want to be experimental and sort of play around, you can also write from a place, I mean you could write from you know, looking ahead into the future as well. I think um, right now, I was actually just recently talking to my students about this because I think there are ways to grapple and cope and um, and um, I guess just kind of push through or process is probably a better way to put it, push, put it. Um, this experience that we're all having right now, we're all experiencing it, it in different ways and for different reasons, we're experiencing it in a variety of ways. But um, there definitely are ways that we can, you know, stay very much in the present, which I feel like everyone is telling us to do. And I get that. Um, obviously, there's value to thinking about the past in terms of how did we get here? And so how can we not have something like this happen again? Or how can we learn from um, you know, what we experience in the present, but there's also value to thinking about the future. And especially creatively, I think this could be a rich place to, um, to, to begin if you want to, and, and to use your senses as well. So for example, we were talking in my class, um, 
I think it was my class last week that I was teaching on Zoom, of course, uh, at, you know, through Montclair State. And we wrote lists of, you know, what will we miss? Um, and what, will, what don't we want to, you know, what, what do we want to remember about this time? Um, what are we looking forward to experiencing again? And, you know, what will we miss kind of thing? And so that's another, I mean, in terms of looking at the future tense or looking ahead to the future, that is something that you can do too. And you can certainly incorporate the sensory, um, you know, the value of the senses into that exercise as well. Uh, so I think what I'll do now, I haven't, um, I haven't located the, uh, the chat screen. So I'm not sure I was, I thought I would be able to take questions or, um, actually, no, I, I see the chat screen. I'm just not sure that it's, it's activated, but, um, what I do want to do now is, is I thought it might be helpful to give you specific concrete examples of things that have resonated for me. Um, and then maybe after I finish speaking and after we finish with this session, you can, um, you know, you can go and do a couple of exercises, a couple of maybe these I remembers, or maybe, um, you know, thinking about uh, objects or um, things in your life that you can write from that, you know, have sensory value. So, I, I created a, a little sort of show and tell, um, uh, I guess you'd say a little exhibit here, but you can't see it. So I'm gonna have to show it to you. Um, so the first thing that I, well, actually this is the first thing I'll show because it's getting close to dinner time. So this would be apropos. So when I see this, which is not at all my favorite soup at all. Um, I have a lot more, um, I have a lot of other flavors and, and, and uh, varieties of soup that I like, but this particular one, the minute that I either, well, usually if I'm tasting this, if I'm having it, if, which doesn't happen often, but if I do have a spoonful of tomato soup, I, for the, most of the time I will be back in elementary school with usually a grilled cheese next to me in my imagination, um, because that's what this taste does. And, um, and, and from there, I mean, I'm sure um, for those of you who can take yourself back to elementary school, there are certainly a lot of stories that, you know, come out of a person's life experience in elementary school. So just even starting with something as simple as that, just, you know, um, the idea of what tomato soup tastes like and letting yourself, giving yourself an opportunity to taste it again and seeing what happens to you as a, as a maker, as an artist, as a writer, and really giving yourself permission to let that, um, you know, let that happen. Uh, seeing and being open and being open to seeing if it takes you somewhere. Uh, and I mean, I think it's important to recognize you have to do the work too, obviously. I mean, you're showing up and you're, um, uh, you know, you, I think it's important to recognize that you have to, um, uh, you know, you have to have a little faith and you have to also, um, sort of let yourself go on the page in places that may seem uncomfortable because it feels like you're not making something that has initially that has value, or it feels like you're all over the place. I can't tell you how many times students say to me, I'm all over the place. It's all over the place. That happens a lot. I, I say that to myself a lot too. So just uh, Again, simple exercise of just tasting something, um, putting yourself in the uh, in the position or in, giving yourself an opportunity to taste something that you know has some um, you know some some degree of of heat or fire, and not literally, I mean, but it has some energy from a time in your life that is uh, is memorable. Another thing that I brought to share is this Jolly Rancher because Jolly, Ran and, and this is, by the way, this is not at all my favorite flavor. It's actually my, one of my least favorite flavors, but um, it's all I had. And I just, Jolly Ranchers were like a big deal when I was in middle school. And so when I taste a green apple or a watermelon Jolly Rancher, it definitely, um, it definitely brings something alive in terms of the sense of taste. The next thing that I have is this, um, it's it's not the actual bottle, but it is a um, it is a 
it's the packaging for the perfume that my mom used to wear all the time. So this is actually very hard to find, but uh, I, when, I, when I see it in the drugstore, I try to pick up one, or sometimes I'll even pick up a couple and send them to my siblings because it resonates for them as well. Uh, so just smelling something from a time in your life that, um, again, is, is a memorable time, a time that has, um, you know, that has a lot of energy. Uh, and, but, and this is just an example of perfume, but obviously, you know, this is where the, the idea of also food comes into play and a lot of sensory experiences. And in fact, a lot of our memories, um, take place in a kitchen. So, uh, I've talked to students who, you know, um, maybe come from another country and then they, they, they're here and they decide that they want to, um, uh, you know, go to a place that has foods that represent the place where they, they are from. And, you know, the minute that happens, something, you know, something is ignited, so to speak. So um, I think that smell can be, a, a, smell can be a really, really uh, powerful sense to write from and to allow yourself, and again, afford yourself the opportunity to do that is a great exercise is a great way to do it. So maybe it means going to places where, you know, the sense of your childhood are, um, you know, are, are, are out and, and available to you. Maybe, maybe you have to work a little harder. Um, so that's the other part of this too, just from an exercise perspective, you know, maybe part of this, if you're interested in this topic and you want to be able to think about how your senses can help you become more, um, uh, become more active on the page, become more descriptive, you know, maybe just writing down, you know, starting with really a list, you know, writing down your senses and then starting with a list of things that, you know, you can attach to those senses that are your, part of your story. Uh, I think that's, that would be a great exercise to start with as well. Um, my next show and tell thing here are, well, they're actually these two tapes, which I can't even play these anymore because I don't have a cassette player. But actually, I do have a cassette player up there, but it doesn't have a uh, it doesn't have batteries anymore. But this is just the the notion of um, make helping you think about music. And I talked about music earlier with regard to um, my first uh, my first experience at the Writing Institute. That first piece that I wrote from the writing prompt um, that I was you know when I was in that class, and that's what actually took me into my you know really it took me into my manuscript. I mean, remembering a song and what happened. Uh, when I remembered that song and where I was when I, you know, how old I was when I, that song was playing and what I was doing and where I was, as I said, the place, um, all of that, uh, you know, really did sort of crack something open on, on a sensual level. And because I was in a place that was, people have said, um, you know, my book, a lot of my book takes place uh, or, or reflects on experiences in a gas station, which is actually a very, textured kind of sensual um, location for a writer because there's a lot of sounds, there's a lot of smells, there's certainly a lot of things to sort of touch and, 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 and slip on and, and, and get on your hands and things like that. So there's a lot of, strangely enough, there, there is a lot of opportunity in a place like that as well. Kitchens are, and, and, and you know, kitchens are another example of that. And I mean, I think I use those examples because those are, uh, those are pretty um, prominent settings in my book too. So these are just two um, cassette tapes because music is a way to get the ball rolling, so to speak, on the page as well. Um, this is um, a photograph of my parents when they were very young. I'm a big, I actually just taught a class today about on photographs and stories. So I think looking at old photographs or maybe not even old ones, I just assigned an, uh, an assignment to my students at Montclair where they just, you know, some of them, they weren't necessarily old photo photographs, but looking at a photograph and really coming to decide for yourself, where does the story, where is the story in that image? Where is the story in that, in that photo? Um, that works for me too. So, uh, and I'm also just a photograph person in terms, I mean, I like looking at photographs. I don't take very good pictures, but I love looking at photography. Um, and then the last one for, for touch is actually, um, I hope you can see this, but this is a jar of sand that um, 
my husband brought back to me uh, when he went on a trip and he was close to the beach and he knows how much I love the beach and he knows how much I um, adore being on the beach and having um, parts of my body in the sand. So he brought this back for me and I keep it here. Uh, and I, I do actually put my hand in there and touch it um, every once in a while, especially on the longer days, on the long, cold winter days I do. Um, so that sits up here on my office shelf and that represents touch. So um, I just played show and tell um, and hopefully you will um, be able to kind of walk around your home and um, or maybe walk around your um, your memories a little bit and think about the objects or the things in your life that um, can help stir up some uh, you know, some descriptions can help stir up your senses and can then help you bring those, those, um, those descriptions and the, 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 the sensual, um, recollections onto, onto the page. Uh, I think that was all I had for tonight. I, I don't know if the chat mechanism is working. I was hoping to take questions but I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that it's working. So if anybody has a question, you can type it in now. But and I hopefully I will see that. But I'm not certain because uh, I don't. There's one part that's a little paused, which actually gives me pause. But um, oh, the other thing I should mention before I finish up for now is that this is another book that. Um, I think has a lot of great, uh, just a lot of great examples of um, writing from the senses. So this is a, um, it is a collection of writings. Uh, it's called Crazy in the Kitchen, Food, Feuds and Forgiveness in an Italian American Family, um, Louise de Salva. And I'm sorry, you know what? There was another one that I was also think, the one that I was actually thinking of is over here. It's but I'm not finding it right now. It's called The Milk of Almonds. That's the collection that I was referring to before. This is a different one, but this one has beautiful writing in it as well. I'm not finding my Milk of Almonds right now, but The Milk of Almonds is another one. That's the collection um, that I was referring to. Again, mostly, um, you know, a lot of writing in here, very, sen very much sensory based in my view. Um, so one thing that I was thinking, because I'm going to be doing this, um, next week as well, I was thinking it might be fun. And hopefully if the chat, um, if I am making a mistake having to do with the chat, then I will figure out what my error is, uh, because I did want to kind of share, I wanted to share some, um, I wanted to share some information. I also wanted to, oh, I think I just found it. Uh, let me see, is this working for you? Let's see if um, if people are seeing that. One of the issues is that there's a Zoom and there's a YouTube. Uh, I mean, obviously we know that, but right now in in my immediate universe, both of those are happening, and I just want to be sure that I'm typing in the right information on the right platform. Uh, so, but what I did want to say was um, for next week, um, if there's if there's if anything that I said resonated or if there's something that you think you'd like to um, follow up on, uh, what we can do is you can certainly just start with a list of I remembers and come at that list from a sensory place. So I remember and then write something that you smell. I remember what, or that you remember smelling. I remember write something that you remember tasting again and so on and so forth and just you know, and it doesn't matter if you have, you know, 10 memories of something that you saw and, you know, one of something that you smell. It does, that's not necessarily, um, that's not of concern. Just the idea of getting the memories and the, um, and the, uh, and the thoughts down on the page is, is, I think, what we're going for here. So that was the first thing I wanted to say for next time. Uh, and the other thing, I have my um, notes here. I mentioned the Joe Brainard. That was that's something you can look into. You can find a lot online about that too. Um, and also just to say that if, you know, if you get to a list of 10 things, I re if you start with the I remembers, let's say, and you get to a list of 10, and then you decide like there's one that's really speaking to you, 
you can definitely um, just lift that one out and just begin writing a scene. You know, you don't have to tell the, the listener or the reader anything. Think of it as though you're just kind of writing to yourself, but or reflecting back on that time and just try to keep it, um, you know, scene driven. And, and I guess the last thing to say is what so many writers remind um, themselves and also one another. And that is that focus on, you know, showing it as opposed to to explaining it to the to the reader or to the listener. Um, if you go right into the details, a lot of times you're going to capture what needs to be captured and you're going to also capture your um, your readers. Um, you're going to capture your readers attention a lot quicker and also I think in a more um, in, in, in a more compelling way, if you just take the reader right there into something that they can either um, feel like they're touching themselves, see, smell, taste, or hear. So that's it for tonight. Um, this community live stream idea is a brilliant one. Um, I do hope this worked. Uh, and I hope that um, you come back next week. And um, also, if there are any questions at all, or any um, thoughts about, uh, you know, taking any of these ideas or, or anything that I've mentioned further, you can um, reach me through Sarah Lawrence. Uh, my information is on the website. And I hope to be in touch again soon. Have a great night and stay healthy and well.